What can DeFi do for you? And we're gonna go into some use cases, starting with lending, just basic lending. So here's how it works right now, but it likely won't in the future, at least in the long run. In the old system, you give the, the bank your money. It sits in their coffers, it sits there, and then they lend that money out to someone else and they charge an interest rate. So they get paid back principal and interest. They take their, their, the money that gets paid back to them. They pay things like their employees for their buildings. They pay for the fact that they have a skyscraper in every single metro area like Wells Fargo and Chase and these other huge banks do. And they take their profits and then they pay you back a measly 0.001% interest as a, hey, thanks for uh, putting your money in our bank and letting us make money off of your money. And we keep it safe with our FDIC insured accounts. But here is the new method. You have investors who pay money into smart contracts in order to lend that money out. And if you don't know what a smart contract is, I'll have a video pinned above that dives in deep as to what exactly smart contracts are. You should watch that first and then come back to this video if you don't know what smart contracts are. So you, you have investors who pay money into smart contract. That smart contract then pays money to someone who is looking to lend money to grow their business, to buy a car, for whatever, and there's a predetermined set interest rate. That person pays money back into the smart contract, the investor gets paid, everyone comes out happier except the bank. The investor gets a higher return, the person pays a lower interest rate, there's less friction, everything is better. This already is trillion dollar disruption. So let's do another use case. Or insurance. You might have heard me talk about this example before. You can see this looks kind of similar. The old, the old version, you have a bunch of people who pay premiums into this big old established insurance company because they, they want to hedge against an unlikely event happening. You have 100 people who pay a premium to the insurance company to ensure, hey, if my house burns down, I'm going to be paid and I'm going to be made whole for that unlikely event. The insurance company takes that money puts it in their pool of money, and this is called their insurance float. They use that float to make investments, they use that float to pay out the unlucky individuals who do have their house burned down who, or who do get into a car accident. And then the difference between the amount of money they collect and the amount they have to pay out is their profit, they use that profit to pay for employees, for their buildings, for their administrative costs, and then take out their end net income at the end of the day. And uh, everyone's happy. You paid into the insurance, your house burned down, you got paid, the insurance company still made a profit, they went home, but there's friction here that, that doesn't need to be here. And then we have the new way. In this system, you have individuals paying into a smart contract and you have insurance investors. If an individual has their house burned down, that smart contract pulls some real world data, pays that individual, and then the investors hopefully receive a return, all automatically with less friction, less cost. This should result in lower insurance costs and higher returns for the insurance investors. Now let's go through another example here. Or we have an exchange. Now this could be for cryptocurrencies like Coinbase, or it could be a stock exchange, a stock brokerage like Charles Schwab or Webull, which is linked down below where you can grab two free stocks, or KuCoin, which is also linked down below and you can save money on your trading fees with cryptocurrencies. But the reason why these exchanges make so much money is because they take your money and they make profit off of each and every transaction. And for someone like Coinbase, if you go and check out their financials, they are making a ton of profit. So in the old way, you pay money to the exchange to facilitate the exchange of assets. They take their cut, they facilitate the exchange. In the new way, all you need are the two people involved, the person who wants to buy the stock or the cryptocurrency and the person who owns the stock or the cryptocurrency. And you just need a smart contract in the middle to facilitate the deal. And it is much cheaper. Now, this is something that's already done. This DeFi exchange these decentralized exchanges are already done. There are exchanges on the Ethereum network and there will soon be exchanges on the Cardano network. This is something I'm very excited about and I plan on doing far more research on these decentralized exchanges because it just makes so much sense. And let's do one final use case. All right, you can see all of these look the same where there's this big institution who has just been reaping the profits as a middleman, and that's just friction that doesn't necessarily need to be there. So this one is a credit card company. So in this case, you know, the situation is slightly different where the credit card company issues you a credit line with this credit card, you use that credit card to pay for goods or services. That company who accepts the credit card takes the card, slides it, 
charges whatever the amount is, and then pays something like 3.4% to the credit card company who gets paid this huge chunk to hold the credit risk and facilitate the transaction. Now, again, this doesn't need to be the case because you could have a simple smart contract that is far cheaper and there's no middleman. It is perfectly executable right in the middle. All of these industries could and will be disrupted. Thanks for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this content, make sure you subscribe to the main channel as well right here.